Hello friends, in this video I'm going to try to recreate the code input system from Beyond Good and Evil. Throughout the game, the player is given this neat spiral staircase input system. It's basically an over-engineered keyboard, but it looks very cool, and feels very intuitive as an input system, especially in days where QWERTY was not the norm. As a challenge to myself, I thought it would be fun to try and recreate the system as best as I can in the Godot engine, and possibly tweak and improve it in little ways as I work through this exercise. The first thing I want to do is take a look at a still from the game and examine it a little bit closer in order to create a general layout for all the UI elements. It's clear that all of these items are the same arc-shaped box sprite in different colors but scaled and faded based on their apparent distance. If the spiral was flattened, 16 of these sprites would form a complete circle, meaning that each is 22.5 degrees rotated and a maximum of 23 of these are visible, 11 forwards and 11 backwards. The font size is consistent between the nearest and farthest items, and also appears offset from the center of the sprite. I don't like how this looks, so I'll try to keep my letters more centered within the sprites. Last thing I noticed in the screenshot, why does it start at Z? Why? This bothers me so much. I'm definitely going to change this to start at A. Instead of trying to simulate a 3D staircase with 2D elements, I decided that it'd be much simpler to recreate this interface in 3D. I first started this project on my YouTube livestream that I host every Wednesday. I'll start off with the 3D scene, using a Sprite 3D as a container for the letter, positioning it to the right side. Then I duplicate it, rotate it 22.5 degrees, and move it slightly forward in the Z-axis. I do this 10 more times, then repeat it again for the backward steps then change the text and font for each item. Next, I recreated the arc shape and replaced the default Godot sprite, and changed the colors and alphas to roughly match the screenshot. Final step before moving onto the controls, I made a cursor to match the original game, but without the abrupt cutoff in the glow. This is starting to look very much like the screenshot. Let's take a look at the controls. The player can move clockwise or counterclockwise to select items. Left click selects a letter, and right click closes the system. You can also erase the letters or select validate which also closes the system. After a bit of code, I have the cursor rotating about the center, but it doesn't quite move the way it should. Currently it's moving in the opposite direction that it should be moving, but that isn't difficult to fix. It also locks if the player moves too quickly. This is a bit trickier, but I realized that the angles are just getting too large, so I wrapped the angles between pi and negative pi. With that fix, it feels much better. Next step is to get the entire interface to move with the cursor, like we're going up and down a staircase. As the player scrolls, each letter should reorganize itself, so the next visible letter moves to the end or front, depending on the direction the player is moving. And that... shouldn't happen. Turns out I had the arrangement of the letters in reverse, so moving things around fixes the issue. I then adjust the alphas for the sprites in the code. One eternity later. And now it's looking great. Last functional part of this is the text input, which is simple enough to implement. Selecting letters adds it to a label text. I can erase and validate, though it just closes the system for now. For the final touch-ups, I have a screenshot of the background, as well as various elements that I made to replicate the original menu. It's just a matter of placing everything in, and animating it with some code. In the original, opening the terminal initially flashes Enter Your Code. Selecting Validate will display either Correct Code or Incorrect Code with a shake. These are pretty simple to add as well. On the note of validate, the original has both validate and erase always display upright, regardless of which side they're on. Mine does not. This was easily fixed by wrapping their global rotations. Last thing to add is the button highlight. In the original, it's clear that they're using a separate sprite as the highlight, which I think looks kind of bad when it's not aligned with the item it's trying to highlight. So instead I decided I would just adjust the color of the item it's trying to highlight. I didn't want to bother creating multiple highlight colors, so I just highlighted the selected item white. This is the final result for now. While it's not perfect, I think it's pretty good. 
It looks just like the original game and it works great, with some minor improvements. You can try it out on my itch page, which is linked in the description below. Let me know if there are any other game mechanics you'd like to see me replicate in the comments. If you want full access to the original source code, as well as the full process of its creation, check out my Patreon linked below. You'll also get full access to all my courses, including my Godot 3D Masterclass. I'll see you in the next video.